if you guys do need any grinding services, hit up my guy Cliff2 underscore 3 on Twitter. A lot of new centerpieces out there for you guys to obtain. Cliff is your man for that. Level 40 Trey Young, hit up my guy Cliff if you do need help with it. Fast and reliable Xbox and PlayStation, hit up my guy Cliff2 underscore 3 on Twitter. You it is good, yo. It's your boy time back here with another video. And in this video today, guys, we're gonna be going over and talking about the season three NBA 2K23 and my team awards. Before we dive any further into this, man, make sure you guys do smash that subscribe button. Start it off with the cheesiest card of season three of my team, Taco Fall. For the average person that picks up 2K, they are gonna be better with Taco Fall than anybody else. Galaxy Opal Kazi, I mean, I guess he's cheesy if you know how to use him. I hate the card, but I guess he's cheesy. And then Bob Nedelecki, maybe the best release you can ask for at that power for a position and absolute cheese ball on defense. It's a no brainer though. Big 7 6 tackle for the cheesiest card in NBA 2K23, my team. Defensive player of the season up next, we got a shooting guard, small forward, and power forward. Look, for MJ, on both steel tendencies, absolutely elite. If he was just a little bit taller, I would be gassing this card. Offensively, MJ's not great, and that's where he, you know, really lacks and leaves a little to be desired. LeBron James at that small forward position. What more can you ask for? 6'9", wide player build, maybe the best on-ball defender in the entire game. And then Giannis, 6'11", crazy player model player build, impacts the game in so many different ways. To me, it is Giannis Antetokounmpo as the defense player of the season. Although he is the defense player of the season, he still doesn't make the best squad in my team right now. Most overrated card up next, and I look at all three of these cards, and the first thought that comes to my mind is you. And I don't know if that's right, I don't know if that's wrong, I don't know, but I hate all of these cards. But the community gasses them, the community loves them. Cassie Russell, the community wants to talk about Cassie Russell as maybe being the best offensive card in the entire game. Meanwhile, I hate his release, I don't think he moves well, and I think he's not great. The best part about Cassie Russell is his defense. Then you get Big Shaq, who can't shoot. Why anybody runs Shaq over Kareem? Couldn't tell you. And then, Pink Diamond, Evo Harrison Barnes. Sure, he's okay, but people are gassing him. Like LeBron James isn't in the game. Are we good? To me, it's Kaz Russell. So, so, so overrated in my team. The most underrated card in Season 3. First off, Pink Diamond, Grant Hill. Nobody really talks about this card at all. And he is a probably top 10 easily shooting guard still to this day in my team. If you want to run him at this small forward position, you definitely can. I saw basically nobody running this card in quals. And I was kind of surprised because I personally really do like Grant Hill and rate him pretty highly. Then Pink Diamond, Braun. I mean, I, would, I don't know if he's necessarily underrated, but for me, he outperforms how good everybody thinks he is. Bron, the best small forward in the game right now. And then Diamond Jonathan Isaac. I mean, people talk about Thurl Bailey. People talk about Evan Mobley. Jonathan Isaac just kind of goes under the radar, but if you need a great small forward power forward and you're just starting the game, Jonathan Isaac is a great option. To me, though, it's Grant Hill. Again, Nobody really talks about Grant Hill, and I'm honestly not sure why. I mean, I love the card. He's 6'8". I mean, right now, he's 40,000 MT. Who else are you getting at the shooting guard position that's going to be better than Grant Hill for 40,000 MT? I'll wait, because I don't think you're getting anybody better at this shooting guard position than Grant Hill for 39,000 MT. An absolute steal. Next up, best takeover card from Season 3 of my team, Point guard Rex Chapman, small forward Jerry Wallace, center power forward Boogie Cousins. Rex Chapman at that point guard position can hold it down. I mean, I, I'm not going to sit here and gas Rex because I don't love him, but he can definitely hold it down. Rex Chapman, 6'4", 95, three ball, can dunk decent, defensively solid, good badge wise, 34 on gold, 7 on Hall of Fame. I think he's underrated. Then Jerry Wallace. And Jerry Wallace has given me so many problems in my team. And it all starts on that defense end of the court. He could have definitely been a defensive player of the season candidate because he is that good on that end of the court. And then obviously DeMarcus Cousins, very solid overall card, 6'10", offensively very gifted. Just leaves a little bit to be desired on the defense end of the court. To me though, it's Pink Diamond, Jerry Wallace as our best takeover reward from the season. Next up, best Evo card in season three of my team. Pink Diamond, Harrison Barnes, that's who the majority of everybody thinks it's just a shoe in for the award. Diamond, Franz Wagner, I personally love the card a lot. I actually think Franz Wagner is better than Harrison Barnes. 
And we can spend a lot of time speculating and talking about that. But that is my firm opinion. And then Diamond Tyson Chandler. If you do need a budget center, man, Diamond Tyson Chandler is absolutely incredible. Like even for me and my nominee spent squad series, Tyson Chandler is a guy that I might pick up because I just know he can hold it down for me. But for me, it's easy. It's Diamond Franz Wagner. That, it's that simple. It's that easy. Got the Evo this year or this season. He's less than 10,000 MT. Six, nine, great defense, good offense, great release. He's better than Harrison Barnes, debate a wall. Budget MVP of season three of next, Jonathan Isaac, Evan Mobley, Thurl Bailey. I, and honestly, guys, you could include Cam Reddish right in this conversation. I don't think Cam Reddish is better than any of these guys, so that's the hard part. But as far as value, he could definitely be in this conversation. Diamond Jonathan Isaac, Diamond Th Thurl Bailey, they're very similar. It really just depends who you prefer release-wise, who you prefer badge-wise, those type of things. Very similar card. And then center Evan Mobley can play the power forward position. Just kind of underrated as an overall card. Really cheap nowadays and, and definitely a card that can hold it down for you, especially on the defensive end of the court. Release is that little slow for me. I'm going Thurl Bailey. When it's Thurl Bailey and Jonathan Isaac side by side, I think I like Thurl Bailey more. But I feel like the majority of the community would agree with me. That's why Jonathan Isaac was on my underrated uh, under underrated category as well. Mr. Inconsistent up next, Bob Nedelecki. Now, the reason I have him on this list is because when I bought him, it was Saturday morning. That's when I, at like 2 a.m., I got him, right? The Saturday morning before calls, I got Bob. I proceeded to play what? I mean seven to ten games with him and when i say i could not green with the card trust me guys i literally could not green with the card i couldn't hit shots with him and i don't know why i literally could not green with him and then when it got to quads i was kind of nervous and i didn't miss basically any shots with him i mean he was absolutely chick and that's why for me he's mr inconsistent luo dang up next a lot of people hate luo's release i love his release so I don't really know what's going on there. To me, he does get a little inconsistent when he is that little bit tired, but I still do like him as far as a decently cheap option. LaMelo Ball up next. Main reason he's on here is because he's got the LaMelo Ball release. Tim Thomas is the same way. I'm really inconsistent with that release. It's that simple. Bob Nedelecki wins it for me because I was worried about him and then he ended up being my most consistent player in 250. My MVP of season three, we got three guys here. Bob Nedelecki, Terry Dishinger, David Robinson. Pretty self-explanatory. All three of these guys are in my 10-man rotation, okay? And out of that, Magic came out in season two. Penny came out in season two. Dr. J was available in season two. Tim Thomas was available in season two. I mean, they all go back to season two. Even when I look at Kareem, season two. So one, two, three, four, five. It what? Five of the guys are from season two. The other guys is Bron, who definitely could be up here. Day, uh, Bron, and then you got Dolph Chase, who definitely could be up here as well. But, I mean, you know, the other three guys are up here. All three of these guys are reserving. Terry, no handles for days. Still love the card. Bob, just Mr. Consistent for me right now. And then D-Rab, who I think is the best center in the game. Bob might be the most consistent, but he's also my MVP, which is kind of crazy to think about. Next up, guys, we got our all AB team. KPJ, Cam Reddish, Herb Jones, Pokachevsky, and Taco Fall. Now, this might be an, an opinion that a lot of people disagree with. But I really do believe if you went out into my team of Limited with this squad, it can compete against the best squad in the game. I really do believe that. Now, are you probably going to win? No. But I really do think you can compete with anybody with this AMI team. Then the all diamond time, all diamond team, Shea at the point guard position, Lil at the two, Jonathan Isaac at the three, Thurl at the four, Evan Moby at the five. Talk about a team that can go out there and compete. This team absolutely can do that. This team really, really solid all the way around. Then the all pink diamond team. Lonzo Ball at the one, Kobe at the two, Brian at the three, Giannis at the four, and D-Rob at the five. Now the three through five, all I think are way better than the backcourt. The backcourt to me, it leaves a little bit to be desired, right? It's just that simple. I just don't love Kobe. I don't love Lonzo. But name another pink diamond that's better at their specific position. I'll wait because I don't think you can name it. Lastly, guys, we do get into our all Opal team. Dono at the one, Kazzy at the two, Terry at the three, Dolph at the four, and Bob at the five. Yes, we're going extremely small. Why? Well, the only other centers I could really include were George Mikan and Big Shaq. And to me, Dolph and Bob are way better than those guys. The only other guy I could really include is Michael Jordan. But I, as much as I don't like Kazzy, 
I think he brings more to the table as an all-around shooting guard, in my opinion. And Dono is just a plug-in at the one. And I, and I don't hate Dono. I think he's a top five point guard in the game still to this day. But that is going to wrap it up for our Season 3 award ceremony. Let me know your thoughts down below in the comments. What award would you guys have changed? Who did I miss out on? Who was I too high on, too low on? Drop a like on the video. Subscribe if you're new. And as always, man, I love you guys. And have a blessed day.